Today with us, Nadim Amar, former major of Julis, at Town, president of the OHR Foundation and vice chairman of the Drews Zionist Organization. And we are here to talk about the massacre. The massacre of 12 kids in a small soccer field, 12 kids that were torn apart by an Iranian bomb sent by Hezbollah in front of their parents. Now, there has been terrible things in this war, terrible atrocities, but this is a new law. Why did they do that? Is it a mistake? What happened? No, I don't think it's a mistake because the Hezbollah been uh, really launching rocket to Israel to civilian cities since October the 8th. So what uh, where the surprise here? Well the surprise uh, most of the Hezbollah muscle uh, the Israeli like uh, defense forces uh, the Patriot uh, like succeeded in uh, in uh, defeating it, but uh, unfortunately, sometimes, sometimes, uh, even uh, like the Patriot uh, uh, miss this muscle, and this time, uh, sadly, tragically, it been hit, uh, uh, as you said, in a uh, football ground and the playground, where really so many children enjoyed uh, a summer Saturday playing football, playing adults with the, some of them with their families. Uh, and they really so beautiful and uh, innocent uh, kids, girls and boys, uh, just like want to enjoy their time. That's uh, on the only fault that they want to enjoy time. They want to live. And they being really massacred. They've been slaughtered in uh, the, in the, a vicious attack of a terrorist organization of Hezbollah. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that exactly they know where they're launching this muscle. Exactly they know, like every time they, um, they launch a muscle, and they exactly knew what, what, what was the destination. So, what the surprise? I mean, uh, it could happen the same in Kiryatish morning. And in Shlomi and in Khatul, it could happen in every town, every city in the northern border of Israel. Well, people really, uh, most of them being evacuated, not living there. But the Jewish community, uh, as in our like tradition, as in our belief, as in our like uh, way of life, are we not afraid uh, from Hezbollah? Are we not afraid? Uh, from uh, his militia and his uh, criminal um, uh, army. And we stayed the, uh, in our towns, in our villages. And that's what uh, that what happened. Tragically, really, I mean, I, I, all my friends, not only from Israel, from the world, they called me really with such a sorrow and outrages about really how can be in this world 12 innocent kids being really murdered, being slaughtered by a terrorist organization. That's, but what I can say, I mean, the Hezbollah, it's a terrorist organization seems like it's been uh, founded uh, a long time ago is a terrorist organization not only against Israel but against his, uh, against his, against his own people the, the Lebanese people. I'm not sure what Hezbollah uh, did or what the ideology of Hezbollah represent the vast majority of the Lebanese people who really want to live in peace. You want they want both of us. They want to live. They, we want, I mean, the normal, you have a life. You want to live a life. You're not, you're not living for a death. You're living to, uh, your life, it's for a life. 
where where it seems to be that Hezbollah and all these extremist organizations have the uh, have like their agenda how to fight and how how to die. Why do you think they targeted the new the Druze community? They actually target every uh, every community, not only the Druze community. They target also mainly the Jewish community. They target uh, there's a uh, Christian town there. And they target all the Christian towns. But when they launch to Maidar Shams, they know that the 100% of the, you know, of the citizens in Maidar Shams, they are Druze. So, so they can't, can't say they not like intend to hit a Druze town. But really, they did. Because if you launch to Maidar Shams, and in Maidar Shams, the 100% of the population are Druze. So really, you meant to hit the Jewish community, but I, I'm not going to really here to a to um, how to say to d discuss really what the reason of uh, what the reason really for hitting specifically uh, specifically uh, the the Jewish community. Uh, maybe because uh, maybe because really. They choose to stay at their town. They choose to stay, not to leave, not to afraid, not to disrupt their normal life. And they are maybe like a message from Hezbollah. No, I mean, if you stay, you take the risk. You stay at your town, you take the risk, but it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. I'm really sure. And I, when since the tragic event, speaking with so many friends. And they go on high and then major chance literally. And none of them, none of them are going to leave the town, all of them uh, now um, standing together, standing together with this uh, uh, awful tragic event, standing with the family who really lost their loved one. There's so many families also uh, stay in hospitals with their kids, with their children, as uh, we learn that more. Uh, more than 29 children uh, in hospital being treated. Some of them, unfortunately, seriously injured. Uh, I'm really uh, take the opportunity to wish them a uh, uh, speed recovery and to go back to their homes, to their family. So we see the whole community, not only in the Gulam High, the whole Bruce community stand together. The whole Druze community really sharing this the, 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 this event and standing with the family, but not only the Druze community. What's happened here in Israel, it's like the whole country, the whole country, from the south to the north where the Druze community live, Jewish, Arab, Christian, Muslim, all of them really feel such a sorry, feel really um, upset about the loss of the, so many a innocent uh, life, so many innocent, uh, beautiful kids. So we see every day, every minute, the whole Israeli society, the whole Israeli uh, stand all together. And it's really, mm, in some case, make it, mm, make it more stronger, if you, uh, even to stood the, against Hezbollah and all terrorist organization in the south and the north, also, of course, Hamas. Uh, oh, they're not going to defeat us. I'm really uh, very, very sure that by the, by the end of the day, by the end of the day, despite the difficulties going here, despite the difficulty living here in the north, where I'm living also, by the end of the day, we're going to win. We're going to defeat them, and we're going to continue our uh, our life here, our lovely life here. I'm talking about the beauty of the diversity of the Israeli society. We're living here all together, Jewish, Druze, Muslim, Christian, Bedouin. We working together. We commercial together. We join together. We visiting each other. It's not really. Uh, and and this world is not going to disrupt this uh, beauty of diversity of the Israeli society.
because uh, this morning the Prime Minister visited Majd al Shams and uh, he was booed and uh, um, they say the Druze community are asking for retaliation. What, what are the feelings of the Druze community right now? Of course, there's outrage in, in the Druze community and there's like anger uh, in the Druze community. How come this could happen? How come, like, why, why, why how, and nobody can explain kids going to a football ground and in their life, in the, in the way we just like uh, uh, witnesses it. Uh, so it's like uh, the call that must be retaliation, must be a, like what happened uh, when uh, the Houthi attacked Tel Aviv and killed one person. So we see like in a few days, the Israeli Air Force is like uh, uh, destroy really the port of uh, Hudaiba. Um, give them a lesson, don't play with us. And uh, so the Druze community really expect that it must be uh, answer, it must be a relation to Hezbollah, I don't play with us, don't play with the, don't play with the Jewish community. But I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I leave this, uh, to the, to the government. I leave this to the, uh, IDF, uh, what they exactly uh, know and do their work, their job. One need to choose the time to regulate, to choose the time to um, to give the answer to his ballot. Although it's, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not sure that it's uh, a matter of the civilians uh, because we really do not have a, any clue about the situation. So, mm, mm, of course, we're going to be like a answer to this going to be a regulation because it can't be like uh, uh, that's nothing happening but uh, again it's not uh, not for me and not for the civilian not for the community it's something uh, I uh, I advise to leave it to the uh, to the people who are professional uh, in dealing with such a matter as the IDF and the cabinet uh, uh, the government cabinet, they they exactly uh, uh, deal with the situation and they exactly know uh, their job and they exactly know when, where, how to regulate. Do you trust the government? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, do you think it's a ta it's time for um, a total war with Hezbollah? Again, you're asking me a question. I just like, uh, I just committed to make a comment about this. It's not matter for the civilian like me. It's not matter for the Jewish community in the Golan Heights, or it's not matter of the, uh, the, 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 the Jewish community in Kariyat Shmone or where. I mean, I understand the the call for revenge. I understand the call for retaliation. I understand the anger. I understand the outrage. But like, it's matter of the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, the Israeli Air Forces, and of course, it's decision for the chief of staff. And it's a decision for the prime minister, defense minister, and the cabinet meeting. Who are we dealing with today? I, I, I'm sure they, they, by the end of the day, are going to decide what the best for Israel, what best for this time, what best for. In my opinion, in my opinion, the really the urgent thing, the most, the the, the most urgent thing, not today. Not tomorrow, but yesterday, we have to do everything, everything to release uh, the 115 uh, hostages being held uh, crucially by uh, Hamas for the last 10 months. This is the, uh, for, not for me only, for the majority, the vast majority of Israel, 70, 78%, 80% of Israel said 
now let's uh, release, let's free the hostage. Imagine, imagine like, uh, imagine my son, my daughter hostage now. Imagine yours, imagine everybody. What the, what, uh, how their life, what's going on, whose life, who's dead. So after 10 months in the war, this war, in the south and in the north, I think what the Israeli government must do, should do, have to do just to release the hostage. After that, we have a plenty of time to do so many things, to deal with Hezbollah, to continue to deal with Hamas, uh, to, but right now, this is the most urgent and this is the most human things. I mean, it's like, in a Jewish faith, in a Jewish religion, that's like to release hostages. It's a uh, it, it's, uh, value. It's a uh, credible value to release hostages in the Jewish faith. And yeah, we it's a uh, uh, the, the, and and then I'm uh, I'm I'm sure the the, the Israel exactly know how to deal with Hezbollah, how to deal with Nasrallah. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, this time is uh, going really to pay a price, high price to to learn a uh, lesson that he will never uh, forget. I think yes. by Israel, by doing, by dealing with Hezbollah and Nasrallah, it's not only defending Israel state, I think the is Israel in this case making a favor, making really releasing. Uh, I'm talking about 115 hostages, Israeli hostage in Hamas. But sadly, sadly, I see that millions of Lebanese hostage by Nasrallah, and millions of Lebanese hostage by Hezbollah. So Israel, when they're going to deal with Hezbollah and Nasrallah, also, I mean, it's for, for the benefit and the future of the Lebanese, not only for the, for the Israel. Because I think one day they will have to do this war because why, uh, why is Hezbollah uh, putting, uh, putting so, much, uh, so much weaponry, no? Why are they training? Mm -hmm. Why are they uh, they getting all all the 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 instructions from for from Iran? Why it's not against any country but Israel and yeah yeah and against yeah. you no yeah they are they are just uh, like getting time to to arm and everything but at the end their goal mm. is the destruction of Israel. Yeah. The... Uh, I I assure you that <laughs> no chance you're going to succeed. Uh, but uh, otherwise, it's the uh, it's matter of uh, it's matter of time, and as I will deal with uh, Hezbollah and with Nasrallah. Yes, and uh, now you you told me that the Druze uh, didn't leave didn't leave uh, uh, Majd al Shams. Yeah. Um, uh, did they try to? Uh, did they? Did the government evacuate uh, the Druze or ask them to evacuate? And uh, they decided to stay. And the other in, like in one in one Druze town, it's called Horfesh, Horfesh. Yeah, the government asked them to leave, and it was one of the towns that like it's so. In the categories close to the world don't have to leave, and the dudes with community, the dudes leader with the mayor of the town said, "No, thank you. We can defend ourselves. We can deal with the situation." And yeah, no, none, even one uh, did leave the the town and they stayed there. About Michael Shams, I mean, it, it's not so close to the border. Uh, it's close to the Syrian border, but also the Jewish settlement around Major Shams, uh, some of them stayed there. Most of them did not leave. 
because it's like uh, not the uh, little far from uh, the Hezbollah muscle uh, or the border. But uh, the government like advise advice everyone there. If you have another place at this time, uh, it's better if you leave your house. You just like make another uh, uh, another uh, accommodation for this time. But none of the Druids, uh, none of the Druid citizens. Uh, again, they leave the towns of Mizashan from the other towns in the Golan Heights. Most of them stayed, and uh, it's nothing happening for the last 10 months. It, yeah, that does not mean Hezbollah did not launch a rocket to the Druze town. It did, but all the time, the Patriots and the Israeli defense succeeded in stopping that. And not unfortunately, not this time. Not this time. Yeah. Not this time. Do the, are the Jewish community feeling neglected by the government? Often, freely. I mean, a, that's in some field. In some field, we feel. Uh, maybe not as a dude because we live in the north. As you say, Israel is like north, the south, and the center of Israel, Tel Aviv. Well, so uh, most community here in the north, uh, I mean, have uh, difficulty with the transportation to like the center of, uh, of, the, of Israel to Tel Aviv. Most of the communities here a, like have less opportunity to have a job than others. But uh, also, a, I hope after this war, after the dudes lost so many soldiers in the, in the battle, about, tw uh, about uh, 12 soldiers before, before the last event, before the case, 12 heroes, Druze soldiers, been killed by Hezbollah and by Hamas. Uh, I really hope that the government now take responsibility more uh, about the Jewish community. The government, uh, the, the government must make a program now uh, during the war and after the war program to push the Jewish community up. A, to uh, to to let everybody know inside Israel and outside Israel that people who stand with Israel, people who stand with the Jewish community, also it vice versa. The Jewish community, the Israeli government, also like uh, it, it, this friendship, this relationship should be put uh, a. a uh, like respected been both sides. Well, uh, we expect now the Israeli government to really push in uh, in a program, especially for the Druze community in Israel, to make to make the situation here in the towns and the villages much better. To a um, uh, like to. To have a meeting, urgent meeting with the mayors of the Druze towns to see what we can, how we can help, how we can make the situation, uh, how we can improve the situation in the Druze towns and the villages. But always I said, but in general, in general, we live in peacefully and harmony and very active way uh, uh, and uh, I'm uh, I'm sure that the uh, things going to be even much better uh, after this war. Nadim, after talking about all the urgent information, maybe we can talk about the Druze. Uh, yeah. Many people have doubts. Are the Druze Arabs? 
Are they Muslims? How many of them are Israelis? What about the town of, of uh, Magdal Shams? Do they all have the Israeli passport? And how many are Zionists like yourself? Huh. A, first, the Druze is totally separate, separate religion. Are you Muslims? No, no, no. We, we have our prophet. It's Yetro. Yetro is the father of law of Moses. Uh, <coughs> as, uh, <laughs> it's like Parashat Yetro. What yes. is Parashat Yetro? Parashat Yetro, Yetro is our prophet. And the, he uh, is the father of law of Moses. You know, Moses, the Jewish uh, um, prophet, married to our prophet, to Sarah, the, to our prophet daughter. So he's the father of law. And we have, we believe in Yetro, we believe in the same God as the Jewish and as the Muslim believe in the same God. But we have the, our, on our prophet, the Muslim uh, prophet Muhammad, the Jewish prophet Moses, and the Druze prophet Yitro. Uh, we have, we have our own separate holy place where the religious people go. Where the unique thing with the Druze religion mm -hmm. is the total separation between the uh, inside the community between the religious people and the secular people like me. Well, when I'm talking about religion, when I'm talking about going to pray every Sunday and the Thursday, uh, we talk, we're talking only about the religious hey, people. Not the, Sunday sorry? is your day. Sunday. Of Sun, Sunday evening and Thursday. This is the two days like the uh, Jews or religious people go to the holy place. And the holy place, it's totally different. It's not a synagogue, not a mosque, not a church. It's called uh, Druze, uh, it's called the Hilwa. Hilwa in Arabic. Hilwa, you, you do speak Arabic, yeah? Yes, yes. Hilwa in Hilwa Arabic is, is, uh, is, sorry? It's beautiful. Hilwa is something isolated. I saw that because, like uh, the, the Druze religious, it is still secret. So it's only a, a religious people who really go to the Hilwa, go to the place, the holy place. They only allow to to pray. They only allow to read the, the books. Like me, I'm a Druze, but I'm not religious. I'm secular, so I'm not allowed to go to the holy place. Uh, uh, Sunday and Friday and Thursday, and I'm not allowed uh, even to read in the in the in in, in, the, in this uh, book. So this is a unique thing only in the Jewish community: the total separation between the two sides, the religious and the secular. So you you are not allowed to read the, from the holy book. No, because because I'm not religious. Ah. If I want to only only. Uh, but what also unique is just like each uh, each one respect the other. Like I'm 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 not religious, but I do respect all the religious people. They do respect me. I respect their uh, role, their behavior, their uh, and they respect uh, me. I'm uh, like uh, uh, religious people not uh, allowed to do something, to eat something. I'm as a secular, it's uh, like, but we respect them, they respect us, but there's like separation, total separation between the the way of life. Uh, but we live together. You can see the same house, the same home, like my home. In my home, it's not the guest. You see maybe the wife religious, the husband not, and the vice versa, or maybe some of the children religious, some of them not, but... Uh, this is the this is the rule. This is the <laughs> you. This is the game, and this is the rule. So you accept the game, and you accept the uh, the rule of the game. Uh, you are, mentioned are you Arab? the Sorry? Are you Arabs? Do you consider yourself Arabs? Uh, as I said, we we speak Arabic and we speak Hebrew, but we also speak Arabic. But a uh, but the origin of the Druze goes back, goes back um, thousand years ago. The, so there's so many Druze uh, not living in the Middle East. They're living like in 
in India. So many Jews live in India, so they are not Arab. So, but when the Jews live here before the creation of Israel, so they speak, uh, they spoke Arabic. And uh, people, uh, uh, many, many Jews live uh, in, uh, in Nepal, uh, where they have no clue about Arab or about uh, Jewish or they are like the Druze, the, they speak the language in, in, in the country where the like uh, people live in uh, Venezuela. Too many people live in Venezuela. Mostly they came from Lebanon and Syria a hundred years ago. So maybe the, uh, the kids uh, do not speak Arabic. So they can be considered as Arab. But their parents, because they come from Lebanon and Syria, like my father, my grandfather, who lived here in Israel many, many years before the uh, 48, were like the Ottoman Empire, and they, so they, 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 they didn't speak Arabic, and we, so myself, we speak Arabic, we speak Hebrew, and a uh, little bit English. That's uh, that's it. So, but we grow like in two, two languages, Arabic and Hebrew. Uh, you asked me about the uh, asked me about the uh, uh, about major shams about uh, for the last fifteen years uh, where the war in Syria started and continue continue we see more and more groups in the Golan Heights really accept the Israeli citizenship because just like uh, a few months ago it been an election in the four. Druze towns. Sixty percent of the Druze uh, voted in the election. That means you can't vote if you do not have a uh, citizenship. You don't. You can't vote if you don't have an Israeli ID. So they they realize the advantage of the life in Israel. The advantage of freedom of speech, freedom of democracy, freedom of religious freedom. And uh, so we see how things change for the last 15, 20 years, and more and more Druze in the Golan Heights uh, live the Israeli life, live the Israeli way, and uh, have the Israeli citizenship. Because uh, I understand there are two communities, one of the Golan Heights, in the Golan Heights, and another one in... Uh... In the Galil, yes. in Israel. Yes. And, and, yeah, uh, when we're talking about the community, the Jewish community live uh, in the Galil, the north of Israel, not in the Golan Heights. It's a different story. Like we've been... We've been like uh, the history of the Jews here goes back more than a hundred years before, before, before the before the Independence Day, before 49, uh, 48, where the Jews leaders at that time, with the Jewish leader at that time, I'm talking about 1936, 1913. Even uh, there's a lot of meeting, a lot of discussion between the Jewish community, the Jewish leader, and the Jewish leader at that time how to cooperate together, how to build the country together, how to... And yeah, it's happened 1948, where the Jewish only was a small minority here. Only 600,000 were the Arab numbers been compared, millions of Arab here, and the Druze choose to, uh, to, to, to fight with the Jewish. The Druze, hundreds of Druze uh, soldiers, Join the army, join the Haganah, join the Jewish in their first war, in the independent war. And too many Jews, the soldiers have been killed in 1948. Um, my father was one of these soldiers uh, who really uh, fight with the Jewish. And uh, my father also, uh, as I learned from uh, books and movies, that his job was like to recruit uh, Druze uh, guys to join the army. He just like as we say, he run in the Druze towns 
and uh, persuade them and uh, recruit them to join the army. And they did succeed in really doing that with, the, as I said, the hundreds and hundreds of the soldiers joined the, the war in 1948. And since 1948, of course, the Druze are uh, uh, crucial and the part of the Israeli society, of the Israeli army, of the Israeli state. And so it's a, yesterday they interview me about uh, about the rule of the Druze community here in Israel and said, what do you think about uh, like 12 soldiers being killed in this war? I said, okay, but it's really just a weird question because Druze being killed in each war. If the Druze soldiers killed in 48, 56, uh, 67, 73, uh, the first Lebanon War, 82, the second Lebanon War, and each war, there's the, the soldier can do soldier and do soldier. That's, uh, yeah, so, but I'm, I'm see, I'm see the pictures, what's going to happen in the coming 10 years, that the dudes in the Golan height going, going to be, more like the Druze here in the Galil. Uh, uh, I see, because they realize what's happened in Syria, they realize what's happened in Lebanon, they realize what's happened in Iraq, in Iran, in Yemen, where and the Druze are peaceful people. The, the, Druze, the Druze faith is a peaceful faith. The Druze faith, faith is only respect all other faiths. The Druze faith respect all other communities. The Druze faith want to live, want life. And when they look to even to Lebanon, such a beautiful country, but being controlled by terrorist organization by Hezbollah. They look to Syria, what's been happened. The leader the leader of the country murdered nearly millions of million in Syria. Look to the uh, to Iraq, to Iran, to everywhere. They said, okay, why, why, why we, why we want to be part of this country? We want to be part of Israel. We want to be part of a normal life. We want to be part of the future. We want to be part of democracy. We want to be part of a freedom of life, of speech, of religion, of everything. And the only state give all this opportunity, Israel and the Jewish people. Well, uh, I hope uh, they will be totally uh, part of the Jewish nation because we have a lot to thank you uh, for all your for all your fight uh, shoulder by shoulder with Israel. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the 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 Druze in the Golan Heights uh, every time they are going uh, they are they are uh, joining. Israel and getting uh, Israeli citizenship. Yeah, I, I mentioned that that most and, of them and now. How many are, are Zionists like yourself? What do, what do you mean? Uh, what we mean about Zionists here in the Jewish community, as I always quote uh, President Biden. Biden said. Uh, to be a Zionist, not necessarily to be a Jewish. You can be a Zionist and not Jewish. And this is the case. To be a Zionist, we are Jews. Uh, what, what do we mean by Zionist? Zionist is like you accept the concept that Israel is a Jewish state. And if you accept that Israel is a Jewish state, and 100% of the Jewish community here accept that Israel is a Jewish place. So that means 100% of the Druze Israeli are Zionist. And what is Zionist? Zionist is really the value of Zionism, the value of, like Zionist said, Israel is a Jewish state, but Israel is a democratic state. Israel is uh, uh, giving the opportunity of giving equality to non-Jewish people. So that's that's what 
the main uh, the the main uh, uh, the, that's been signed and written with the independence declaration with Ben Gurion and with other two that Israel is a Jewish place, but Israel also a democratic place and with a full a full rights to the non-Jewish people, a full rights to the minorities of Israeli. That's that's the value of Zionism. That's the value of the Israeli uh, the Israeli state. Uh, so I want to talk about that the the upset of the Jewish community with this national law, where it's, it changed the rules. Said the like uh, uh, the 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 Israel, it's only a Jewish state of some kind. Uh, it's really upset the Jewish community, and the, and all the time we call in, we're talking to to take this law from the law books in Israel. I might argue about this law that this law did not affect only the Jewish community. It affects badly the Jewish community. It affects badly the Jewish community in Israel and more outside of Israel. Believe me, I know so many Jewish live in the state and the, uh, in Europe, London, and elsewhere, and I know the leaders of the community there. I know the uh, I met and I know the leaders of too many organizations in the state. And believe me, they are really not happy with this national law. Not happy. Said, okay, what we gain? What the point of this national law apart from like affecting the name of Israel uh, badly? Uh, so I'm. Um, I'm sure that it's a matter of time that this law is going to be really abolished, that law is going to be out of the Israeli books. And uh, that's what the, the Israeli government, the Knesset, the parliament, the legislative must do, should do, have to do for the name of Israel, for the name of the Jewish people, for the uh, benefit of this uh, uh, country. Go back to to Zionists. I explain you how we how how we see the Zionism, how we look at the Zionism, just like you accept the concept that Israel is a Jewish state, and we would like to see most the whole Jews in the world coming to live in Israel, coming continue building the state of Israel. We, the Jews, would like to see every Jew in the world come to Israel because it's really, uh, historically, it's a Jewish place. We see like uh, uh, wow. it, uh, every few months we recover here the, uh, something from thousands of years, a Jewish heritage and, uh, and cities and the towns everywhere, everywhere. So this is, this is the Zionist. So... In that case, a hundred percent of the Israeli Jews are Zionists as they accept what I just uh, mentioned. Do you think there should be elections? Oh yeah, of course, of course. It's 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 not a question even. I said, look what happened just last month in Britain, where uh, the prime minister, the the previous prime minister, Rishi Sunak. I uh, realized that I am prime minister. We had the election some three, four years ago, but all the polls said we are not popular. All the polls said the British people are really not happy with what was going on with me as a prime minister and with my government or with my party, the conservative party. And he said, okay, let's go back to the people. Let's go back. This is, this is democracy. Let's go back to the people. Ask them if if you would like us. It's because it's undemocratic. It's undemocratic. It's un unfair when you ruling the country where the whole polls for maybe half a year or more said no, thank you. We we not happy. We upset. Uh, we not support you. How come? Uh, how come in democratic country the leaders? Uh, okay, you've been elected some two, three, four years ago, 
we accept your ideas. But now the majority, the vast majority said, no, we're not happy. You are, you, you are not anymore represent us. So let's go to election and let's the people decide whether they would like Netanyahu to continue as the prime minister or would like to change it. And that's because that it must be election in, 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 I don't know why in Israel always election in three months, like in Britain, <laughs> one month, in France, 20 days. And also again about the France with the, uh, with Macron. Uh, he, he, yeah, he, he, they had election, of course, not for the presidency, but for the parliament and his party lost and the prime minister uh, offered his resignation or he resigned. I'm not sure whether being his resignation accepted or not. This is the democracy. And being here, I mean, uh, uh, okay, at the first after October the 7th, everybody agreed it's not time for election. It's time for uh, defending the state. It's time for really, uh, okay, but uh, we expect that after only half a year, let's, let's go back to the people, let's have the election. And that's, I'm not talking about only my belief or my view. I'm talking to you. I'm sure if you had a, a no, <laughs> I mean, only last week, last week, last Friday, the survey, the polls in Israel, 70% want to go to election. If 70% of the, really the, the, the population want to go to election, so let's go to election. I understand. That's it. Uh, that, okay. And if they, if, if they, if the people decide, despite what happened in October the 7th and after October the 7th, that they're going to vote for Netanyahu government, okay, that's the government, that the people decide. This is the decision of the, the, the what, do we accept that? And we are living in democracy. We, we like, accept the rule. We accept it. But, Let's go to election. Now time to go to election. Do you think the Druze will vote for Netanyahu? <laughs> for the last three, four elections, the Druze did not vote for Netanyahu because the national law, because this government made this national law. But uh, uh, traditionally, the Druze vote from the center to the right. From the center to the right. This is traditionally for 70, 70 years. The, 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 the majority of the Druze right from the center to the right. But for the last two, three elections, uh, the Likud party did not get the enough support from the Druze community because this national law uh, really upset and affect the Druze community. So, but they voted for Gantz, for the Ir Lapid. And they, of course, of course, um, I'm not sure what this time they're going to vote. But let's go to election. Let's get, let's let the people decide who the, the people decide who want, uh, want Netanyahu, Gantz, Lapid, or maybe Bennett, and, uh, <laughs> who is now uh, again on the political arena, they're so popular and they get a close relationship. And why why the Jews for the last three elections voted more for Gantz? Because Gantz party uh, have like uh, Gade Eisenhower and Gantz and Yalon. These three of them, uh, chief of staff, serve as chief of staff. And like the Jews usually Vote for some someone came from the army, came from the and all these three guys have thousand and thousand difference in the Druze community because most of those serve in the army, most of the Druze uh, involved in the army in the top level of the army. So these guys, the Gans, Eisenhower, Yalon, and Skinazi, all of them, all of them, being chief of staff, being. I uh, uh, have so many friends with the Jewish community, so they admire them as a uh, prestige and uh, this uh, respect and uh, respect the Jewish community. 
But the bottom line, the bottom line, we live in democracy. Let let go back to the people. Let get the people to decide who want to lead this country. Who want to lead this country in this such a uh, most difficult time since 1948. And this is this is the most democratic thing to do. Let's go back to the people. And uh, talking about the 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 army, you are you were an IDF officer. Oh, I think you you still are. And we can see that in your profile picture. <laughs> what was your experience? No, no, and no, 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 this misunderstanding. This picture, this is my late brother, who was a brigadier general. Brigadier general, it's uh, one of the highest rank in Israeli army. It's one rank before the top level, being a general in the Israeli army. Unfortunately, tragically, sadly, and eight years ago, uh, as he's serving in the army, he, his plane crashed and he died. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I'm working now, as you at the first of this uh, interview said, Nadeem, I'm the head of the OR Foundation. What's mean OR Foundation? OR, it's a light. My brother's name is Munir. Munir in Arabic, it's a light. So, and a uh, light in light in Hebrew, a light in Hebrew, it's or. So this is the and since then, I'm working really to. Uh, I'm not saying to commemorate his death, but like to commemorate his legacy. His legacy being uh, none. Jewish Israeli, but uh, being a um, proud Israeli, his legacy being uh, so proud to be an uh, Israeli Druze officer. I, uh, his legacy uh, to um, to push the Druze community, the Druze girls and boys, to go to higher education as he when he died was doing his PhD at Haifa University. So uh, we believe that to be, to succeed in Israel, Israel is one of the most competitive countries, Israel is one of the best countries like uh, to live. So you have to take the two route to be, to go to, uh, to army, to serve in the army, doesn't matter if you use just the minimum, if you can be an officer and carry on, but on the other hand, to go to the education path, to go to higher education, to get a degree with these two, uh, with these two advantage, you really can cope and can succeed and can be a proud Israeli. That was my late brother Monir. That's what I'm doing. Uh, right now, what I'm doing in this organization, uh, two things. I'm, and I, I take the opportunity and thank you for this interview to speak to the Jewish community in Mexico or Latin America. I said uh, what I'm doing is uh, like uh, turning the Jewish community in the state and Europe and Latin America, who are the Druze? Who are the Druze as well? This interview really makes the joke. Who are the Druze? What the role of the Druze? What the relationship? What the connection? What this unique treaty? Uh, what this is strong bound between the Jewish and the Druze community? Uh, how the Druze community live in Israel? How? Uh, this is first thing, and this can be uh, to be the best lawyer for the state of Israel, the best lawyer for the state of Israel, when I speak like uh, in uh, every stage in Europe or uh, in uh, the United States, in the UN, in the Congress, everywhere I speak about Israel, every bit, everywhere I speak about really the real life of Israel, the beauty of diversity of the Israeli society. How the life here is so good. Uh, despite what we 
now like a, a, a this a war time, this tough time, this difficult time. But okay, it's going to end next month, two months, three months. With but in general, this is the real life here. I'm talking as a non-Jewish, as a non-Jewish, as Israeli Druze. Really come to visit Israel, come to see Israel, come to see how this country is so lovely, so unique with 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 its mixed people. Uh, so I'm talking about the Druze. It is so important for me that every Jewish, each Jewish, live outside of Israel to know about the Druze community here in Israel. And on the other hand. I'm talking to a non-Jewish like uh, to an uh, organization in these countries, in European countries, America. Uh, maybe you get little false idea or fake news about Israel because Israel is not really what we see during Al Jazeera, CNN, or uh, or BBC. Israel is totally different story. We are the true Israel. We are the real Israel. We are the Israeli story, and uh, the the. Uh, so I would take the opportunity through this your uh, interview really to appeal to the Jewish community in Mexico and Latin America, please, uh, when you come to Israel, come to visit the Jewish community, come to see the Jewish town, come to see how lovely really our towns, our villages, how lovely we live, how really lovely we have this strong connection, lovely connection, harmony with the Jewish community. And I take also the opportunity uh, to maybe, maybe one time with the, our uh, friends, Maxime, when I come to the state, maybe to come to Mexico, to uh, have a meeting. It would be wonderful if you come, Nadi. Yeah, uh, to have a meeting with the Jewish leaders in Mexico, with the Jewish community in Mexico, to explain, to explain what, what I'm explaining now. And as I explained to the Jewish leaders of communities, the organization in the state, that's if you come, when you really empower the Jewish community, when you uh, endorse the Jewish community in Israel, you really make an Israel more stronger. This is the best way to invest in Israel security. This is the best way to invest in Israeli society, to invest and to to hug the Druze community in Israel, because the, 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 by by uh, by empowering the Druze community, you invest in, in Israeli security. I I am sure because uh, for me, um, the Druze community in Israel have, have always been a symbol of loyalty to Israel. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's impressive. Uh, they they never they have no doubts. They they are loyal to the state of Israel, to the army of Israel, to uh, the values of Israel, and it is something impressive because it is one of the few community Israel can rely on. The Druze and the Hundred percent, what you say. Hundred percent. I quote my friends. I quote my lady friend who died three years ago. He always said, "The best friend for the Jewish community in the world. This is the Israeli Jewish community. The best friend." He always said, "There is no good friend to the Jewish in all the world." like the Druze in Israel. We see, we see this in this world, what happened in the universities, what happened in the state, what happened in the, yeah. So, but who will still stand strongly, proudly with the Jewish? The Israeli Druze, and that's it. And, but I could say also, the best friend for the Druze in Israel, it's the Jewish community. So it's like mutual, it's vice versa. As I said, well, yeah, uh, I mean, we feel that. We feel that our best friend, the Jewish people. But we feel also we are the best friend for the Jewish. Not only in the for the Jewish in all over the world. We are the best friend. So, uh, because that, like, if we 
in, uh, in any time have the opportunity really to come to speak with the Mexican Jewish community, leader community, about what's going in Israel, about the Jewish community, about the role of the Jewish community. I really appreciate that and I will be really, uh, because as, as you just described that, uh, uh, and I, I also, uh, I also quote Ben Gurion, Ben Gurion, who came to my town to Jews, 1958, only like ten years after the Independence Day, and Ben Gurion chose to come to Jews to my town, small town, to say thank you to the Druze community, to say thank you, and to say Ben Gurion, it's been in Hebrew. Do, do you do you manage to read Hebrew? Yes. Yeah? Okay. I'll, when I finish the interview, I'll send you exactly the quote of Ben Gurion, what he said about the Druze. What, what did he say? Ben Gurion said the Druze community was the first in Israel that understand that equality is not only with rights, but only duty. And the, uh, and Ben Gurion said, the Druze community is the first community who asked the Israeli government in 1956, the Druze leader, request the Israeli government to that the Druze go to the army by law, not by volunteer. Because since 1948 to 56, the Druze went to the army as my father as a volunteer. But the Druze all the time requested the government, no, we want to be equal, not only in right, but in duty. The Jewish boys go to the army, we want to, the Druze by law to, the, to go to the army. And Ben Gurion continued. There's no difference between a Jewish soldier and the Druze soldier. All we are brother. We are friends. Friends in the army, friends of weapon. Uh, uh, ben Gurion said the uh, the respect, the mutual respect between the Jewish and the Druze in Israel, it's a symbol, as you said, it's a symbol for a common life, a symbol of diversity and brotherhood. And to this, it's international meaning. And this effect that the Druze, he said, I'm translating, this is a symbol for a common life and uh, respect between the communities. And this, to this, this is a worldwide international meaning. That's Bingurion said, 1959 in my town in Judas. Uh, how yes. can we help uh, the or the or uh, organization? How can our readers help the or organization? The or organization we have a website, but the website in Hebrew right now. We working with the Maxine and the other uh, Jewish uh, friends in the United States. To make it soon in English. Thank you so much, Nadim. Thank you so much for this interview. You, you special welcome. You most welcome. I really did enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. Uh, and I hope you come to Mexico. It will be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I think you with Maxine, if you can arrange anything, hopefully when I come into the state, just come to Mexico and meet the Jewish leader, the Jewish community, speak about Israel, speak about how proud to be Israeli, how proud the, the whole Jewish community to be Israeli, uh, to speak about really, as you said, what's, what's loyalty mean? What's really, uh, to tell them about uh, our, uh, the Jewish best friend in the world, the Jewish community in Israel. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much for coming.